Good afternoon all. Thinking about the fan in my shed, the ventilation fan, I'm switching it with a relay. Now I'm going to get um, some sparks across the relay contacts due to the flyback voltage on the motor. Now I've set up a sort of miniaturized version of the shed fan and I just wanted to see if I can see any sparks. I've got the black monolith here from 2001. And I can't really, oh yeah, just a little bit of a spark. But certainly if I stall the shaft, and of course if the fan motor has a propeller on it, then it will be effectively stalled when the relay closes because it's got inertia. So let's try and hold that. And that way I'm getting much more sparking. So... I was thinking, of course, put diodes across, or a diode, across the inductor to quench out the flyback voltage. When you remove power from an inductor, you'll get a reverse, very high voltage because it can't develop any current. And I thought, okay, well, instead of using just regular 1N41, 4001s, or these are 4005s, I can't remember what voltage they are, I'll look it up in a moment. Let's use this TVS diode. This is a P6KE33CA, which means that it starts to conduct at around 33 volts. So I'm just going to solder that on. Oh, my soldering iron switched itself off. So let's solder that across the motor, like so. That's on there. And then try the uh, spark gap experiment again. Stall the motor with my hand and I'm getting pretty much the same amount of sparking there as um, with no diode so it seems that clamping this at 33 volts doesn't really eliminate the sparks there's enough uh, voltage at 33 volts to create those sparks so then I thought okay well I'll put on a 1N uh, for the blow 5 I've got to be very careful with this because if I put it that way with the current flow through the diode then when I connect this to the battery it'll go through the diode it won't go through the motor so this needs to be in the reverse bias direction so that it only conducts when the inductors in here produce the reverse high voltage flyback voltage and it'll clamp that out so let's solder that across here I've already got solder on here. That's getting a little bit warm. Let's just make sure that's on. Yep, yeah, that's on. And just to double check, that's the right way around. The cathode is pointing to the positive, so it's not going to immediately sink current from pos down to neg. Let's try that. I'll stall the motor again. And that's having much more of an effect. So it seems that if you clamp out the or suppress the flyback voltage at a very low voltage and this would of course um, conduct at 0.6 volts then you pretty much eliminate all the sparking now as I say this is a much smaller motor and battery setup than in the shed um, you've seen I hope the video of the motor in the shed if you haven't it's because it's on my other channel please go to my other channel I'll put a link in the description below and please subscribe because I'm at something like 9,300 subscribers. I'd really like to get to 10,000. I'll just put in a clip actually from the video on that other channel so you can see the sort of spark that I was getting. So let's give it a try. Yeah, that's pretty good. So that was the uh, fan in the shed, considerably bigger than this motor because that uh, fan is 6 amps or 72 watts, uh, quite uh, a fair bit bigger spark than I'm getting from this. I've removed the diode there. Now if you want to see the uh, propeller and stuff inside that fan, I'll just insert another shot from my other channel. Let's see if it works like a ho hovercraft. It's blowing downwards. Yeah, kinda. So it seems that the idea of using a, a TVS diode or a 
transient suppression diode. Let's just open the blinds, get a bit more light in here. Um, isn't going to do the job. And the idea with this, of course, is that I could um, not worry about which way around the motor is, so that I could, if I fancied occasionally, run it the other way. Um, now I don't intend to do that, so I am, I think, going to have to go for the uh, standard silicon diode. I'll probably put, because I've got quite a few of these, uh, a whole series of them in parallel with each other, just for extra resilience. It probably isn't necessary. One diode will probably do the job, but I'll probably get a little piece of Vera board, stick a load of diodes across it, and stick that in line with the motor wires, those black and brown wires you saw in that other video clip. And that will be my relay protection because I don't really want the relay contacts closing, welding up and then staying closed even when I try and switch the fan off. Of course, I would see um, if the relay contacts got welded closed because I've now added um, voltage and current voltage of the 12 volt battery in the shed and the current that the fan is taking for which obviously I'll need a current sensor these are just dummy numbers on here at the moment but the transmitter is actually in the shed at the moment transmitting humidity and temperature and then I've just duplicated those floats into these two positions so it certainly is not 75 volts and 14 amps but that answers my question for today which is can I use a bidirectional TVS diode so that I don't have to worry about which way around the motor is connected to the battery. Well, it seems not. It seems that I'm going to have to use uh, one or a series in parallel of standard silicon diodes to quench the sparks as much as I feel I need to. Cheerio.